Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and this is my channel, Vitcha. In this video, we're going to cover 10 things that you may or may not know about Dying Light. We'll brush over topics based in game mechanics, Easter eggs, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all of these Dying Light topics are either obscure or widely unknown. And the bulk of the list will be from Dying Light's expansion, the following. But some of the list is related to the game in general. And the list will get more difficult as we go. So remember to play the game where if you learn something new, you hit the like button. If you don't learn anything, don't feel bad for one second to, you know, send a tweet to Techland telling them their game needs more secrets. But <laughs> who am I kidding? This game is filled full of awesome little things. All right, let's jump into it. Since the Dune Buggy is the newest and best addition to Dying Light the following, it seems as good a place as any to start the list. Now, these few topics aren't going to blow your mind or anything, and that's why it's number 10, but there's still subtle little nuances that you may have overlooked. First off, if you've ever rolled your buggy over and don't feel like resetting it, just give it a little kick to turn it right side up. Also, I think it's pretty well known that obliterating zombies is the best way to level up your driving ability. Well, what you've probably done a hundred times but may have not noticed is running over zombies in reverse yields a little more XP than when you're going forward. Also, just as a quick tip, if you cover yourself in zombie guts camouflage, it still works even when you're driving. It's a great way to avoid being pursued at night by volatiles so you can really rack up some awesome XP. Now speaking of cars, what game with its biggest, newest feature being the addition of vehicles would be complete without showing respect to Warriors of the Road? That's right, you can find a nod to Mad Max's car known as the Pursuit Special or V8 Interceptor in Dying Light. It's in a warehouse way down south, just west of the racing track and east of the dam. As you can see here, the car looks very similar to many of the vehicles from Mad Max. It's got a big block coming out of the hood, spikes all over it, cages on the windows, a mounted shotgun, and even the door is marked police commemorative of the first film in which Max is an officer of the law on the highways of Australia. You know, before the world got much, much worse. What a lovely day! Now the next one is kind of baffling. Somehow among all the zombies, surviving physics-defying falls into piles of trash, mutated human hunters, and smearing yourself with guts to walk freely within groups of undead. Among all these things, one Dying Light player decided they could suspend their disbelief no longer when, you guessed it, the power grid and electrical wiring of Haran was inaccurate. Basically, Twitter user Complexity, an electronical engineer, goes on to say that all the switches, transformers, and power lines of Dying Light don't make any sense, and gives detailed photos explaining why. Wait, what is that? Is that a, th three f a 345 five volt transformer? What the hell are these developers thinking? <laughs> you know, that's not accurate at all. That's it. That's it. I'm with you, Complexity. That's where I draw the line. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go smash the brains of some dead humans who are rotting corpses but somehow have motor functions and have been reanimated. You know, somewhere away from these ridiculous power lines. Jesus! Now, what actually makes this cool is the developer of Dying Light, Techland, didn't just respond to being called out by the electrical engineer on Twitter. They actually went so far as to put together an entire mini-trailer to answer Complexity's question about Haran's power system, entitled, The Haran Power Mystery. Further still, with an item from the following expansion, you can now visit this bizarre power plant in-game. Once you receive the military decoder from Fatin and Tolga, you can open the chest containing the blueprint for Tolga's Folly. Upon crafting the device, you'll receive an item called the Button, and when pressed, it will teleport you to one of several random weird locations. And one of these locations is a sealed off warehouse and inside of what appears to be where the trailer from the Haran Power Mystery was filmed. There's empty human sized hamster wheels, a professional camera, 
and dead Techland employees all over the place. Now <laughs> I love it, that's dedication to a joke right there. For number 7, if you go here, you can find the skeleton of Indiana Jones. Whip, hat, torch, treasure. It's a list of 10, I gotta fill the list, they can't all be winners, kid. Next! Number 6 is an easter egg and I love this easter egg. Mostly because it's a nod to one of my favorite Cormac McCarthy novels and the amazing Coen Brothers adaptation of the book to film, No Country for Old Men. So what you may not know is that if you go to the northwesternmost point of the map, you can find a scene that depicts the events from the beginning of No Country for Old Men. In the movie, the main character, Llewellyn Moss, is hunting wildlife, and while out in the wilderness he stumbles across a drug deal gone bad, and eventually finds a heap of money on a man who died under a tree who initially had escaped the shootout. This same scene can be found in Dying Light. There's cars laid out in a very similar order, dead bodies of armed outlaws, and even in the back there's a dead man leaning against a tree with a full bag of valuables at his side. Good stuff right there. In my previous Dying Light video I talked about how if you helped the wood and his son, you could run into them later in the game, only the second time around the kid is holding the Master Sword from The Legend of Zelda instead of a plank of wood like he had the first time he saw him. You know, causing this to happen. Well, this time around, you can make your own Master Twilight Phantom Sword thing. All you have to do is go to the middle of the map, on the coast, just east of the lighthouse. Here you'll find a parachute on the beach, and if you swim out into the water, you can find the blueprint for the Twilight Phantom. Then you can have your own Zelda adventure, Dying Light style. With number 4, I'm going all the way back to the development phase of Dying Light. And did you know that Dying Light, much like Techland's first zombie slasher before it, Dead Island, was also originally going to have multiple playable characters? Much in the same way Dead Island has Sam B, Logan, and the others, Dying Light 2 started with a cast of four including Kyle Crane, Spike, Jade, and Brecken. This is also why in one of the original Dying Light CGI trailers, Run Boy Run, it featured Harris Brecken instead of Crane. At this point, Kyle wasn't the primary focus. It wasn't until much later in development that Techland decided to ditch the four characters and instead integrate them into the main story and focus on a single protagonist. Also, as one more bit of cool little information, at the end of the trailer we get to see how Brecken got that head injury he's nursing throughout the entire game. Now speaking of taking a large part of the playable cast away from Dying Light, with number 3, if you head to the coastline pretty much as far southeast as you can go, did you know that you can find a scene depicting similar events to that of the movie Castaway? Yep, just like from the Tom Hanks film, you can find a beach with luggage and clothes hanging like someone's been there for a really long time. Also, there's a makeshift raft made of debris and on top of the raft is a bloody soccer ball, much like the volleyball from the movie with Tom Hanks' bloody handprint on it. For number 2, I have little doubt that a lot of you have seen this, but I'm willing to wager that you either may not know the significance of it, or were unaware of the depth of this easter egg's details. So, did you know that just east of the racetrack, on the southern end of the countryside, you can find an entire house dedicated to Harry Potter? No surprise there, but let me go through the many nuances. First off, the room under the staircase is a nod to Harry's room. Also, inside the room there's a lot of little connections. For one, there's obviously the broomstick on the wall which is calling back to Quidditch. Next, on top of the bed there's the wizard's hat which is referring to the sorting hat, and besides that is a pouch filled with valuables, which is likely hinting at Hagrid's mokeskin pouch, a bottomless bag filled with many valuables. Also, on the nightstand next to the bed there's Harry's iconic circle rim glasses. Now, if you head upstairs there's also a dead woman in a bathtub. This is likely a reference to Moaning Myrtle, who in the Chamber of Secrets was found dead in the bathroom after being petrified by a basilisk. And next to her in the bathroom is a shattered mirror, and Hermione used a mirror to peek around the corners to avoid the basilisk gaze. And finally, up on the ceiling, there's bloody footprints. The prints suggest a connection to the Marauder's map. And last but not least, heading back down to Harry's room, also near the ceiling, there's a shelf with a shrunken skull on it. 
and when interacting with the skull, it spins. Interact with it four or five times and it will fall over. Then, after leaving the room, the house will become haunted, and specters of ghost raiders will invade the upper and lower floors, trapping you inside. The ghost's heads are more transparent than the rest of their body. This is likely referring to nearly headless Nick. There's nearly headless Nick. Hello, Percy. Also, from the novel, shrunken heads are often associated with death eaters or curses. This might explain why, after interacting with the skull, the house becomes haunted and ghosts attack you. Now, that's about all I could find, but there could be more. One thing is obvious, though. Someone at Tech Clan really likes Harry Potter. Alright, the last one has to do with an alternate secret ending to Dying Light the following. You know, different than the two options the game gives you outright. In fact, you can actually skip the final scenes with Mother altogether. Now to access this ending, you're going to need the military decoder. Just continue the quest chain Crash Boom Bang until Fatin and Toga leave you the military decoder. After you have the decoder, you can grab all the components to gain access to the alternate ending. And to do so, you'll have to find three military items. The first item can be found on a dead soldier just underneath the body of water near the base of the dam. Next head east to a warehouse where you fight the freak boss zombie creature, the Behemoth. You can find the second card in a crate there. Last head way up north to the coast and almost directly east of Jazir's farm. Here among some rocks poking out of the water, near a downed military plane, you can find the last item required, the nuclear launch codes. After obtaining all three items, just head over to the highway near Jazir's farm. Here you'll find some military semi-trucks and there's one giving off a radiation signature to your Geiger counter. Jump on the back of the semi and swipe your key card to gain access. Next, walk to the back and access the terminal. After that, all that's left to do is arm the nuke and send the zombies screaming back to the 1950s duck and cover age. Emergency lock override accepted. Preparation of nuclear warheads in progress. 10, 9, 8, 7. That's it for today, kids, but don't forget to tune in for next week's broadcast of the Masked Muskrat to discover if he saves his precious cattail crop from the evil alligators of Chainsaw Lagoon! Gee golly, 1950 sure is boring without the newest radio shows. That's because you're living in the past, Billy! You need some new entertainment! You need Crunchyroll! Gee whiz, that sounds just swell, mister, but... But, how, how'd you get in my house? <laughs> Shut up, Billy. With Crunchyroll, you can stream all your favorite anime, like Naruto, Attack on Titan, Erased, Food Wars, and many more! Wow! I don't know what any of that is! That's okay, Billy. With Crunchyroll's free 30-day trial, you'll learn in no time at all! <gasps> and... After you love it, like I know you will, the premium membership is only $6.95 a month, or you can cancel any time. Boy, that just sounds neato! Oh, what? Well, we don't have one of those television doohickeys. You can use more doohickeys than just a TV. You can stream all the newest anime on your tablet, mobile device, computer, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or Wii U. Wow! I don't understand anything you're saying! Well, Billy, it means for no cost at all, you'll be the hippest kid with all the newest and best anime without any of those pesky ads. Wow! Does, does that mean my mom will love me too? No, Billy. No. 
Remember, visit Crunchyroll.com anytime to watch all the newest anime free of charge. Also, with the premium membership for only $6.95 a month, you won't have to sit through any ads. But that's not all! If you go to Crunchyroll.com slash Terramantis, your first 30-day trial of premium ad-free anime is on us. I got pudding all over myself again. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching the video and the spot I put together for Crunchyroll. I'll see you in the next one.